Hi, I'm Laura Tamlin Watts, Senior Fellow at the Canadian Centre for Elder Law. Welcome to Hull & Hull TV. Joining me today, Ian Hull, co-founder of Hull & Hull. And with me also is Susanna Popovic montag Managing Partner of Hull & Hull. Today we're talking about one of those really difficult issues, the, the elephant in the corner issue, which is really assisted suicide and where we are in Canada. What we've seen lately is that there's a challenge to the old case of Rodriguez 20 years ago, which said essentially no go on this issue, no assisted suicide. But since then, we've really had a whole number of changes, I think, in ideas, expectations, and what's happening in other jurisdictions. And so I want to start off by asking you, what do you see coming? Is this a topic of conversation that you're having with your clients? And, and what does that look like? Much more than ever before. So it certainly is sort of top of the mind when people are coming in. They always used to be so concerned about the wealth, the financial side of things, but now they're realizing that there's this whole other side that comes with end of life, and that is these decisions and who gets to make them. And so we're having conversations that I would say even 10 years ago we weren't having with our clients. So it's not just sort of the pulling the plug conversation. It's so can someone help me do that? Ian, what do you think is going to be happening in Canada? What are you seeing in terms of these events unfold? Well, I think it's going to be driven uh, in large part, obviously, by uh, the government's reaction to, and, and I think Quebec has sort of opened the window a, a little bit, and, and it's a gap, but it's opened the window to the to. Uh, really sensible reform in, in some respects. But I also think the legal community has got a big part in this because, as Susanna says, I mean, we're on the front lines of these tough discussions, uh, and it's doctor-assisted uh, suicide. Is it uh, family-assisted suicide? And what can the legal community, and what role should we be playing in it as well? And I think that will help drive some of the dialogue and some of the discussion because at the end of the day, we're un uh, being dragged back into a debate by virtue of the, the change in public opinion, in large part, into a debate that as solicitors, we're maybe not quite ready for. Uh, so uh, we have to, I think, in large part, start to get comfortable with the topic, talk about what questions we're going to ask our clients about, and then take it to that next level and start to give them what kinds of options are available in what different jurisdictions. One of the things that we've historically heard counter to any kind of assisted suicide, whether it be friend and family or whether it be doctor-assisted suicide, is this idea that folks that we don't value as much, quote-unquote, in the communities, and I use that very much in quotations, will be subjected to sort of a euthanasia-style end of life. So the disability community has been very concerned about this. They've said that that this is going to come up time and time again. And, and I wonder, I think in the last 20 years, we've seen maybe some of those fears dampen as other jurisdictions have not had that experience with uh, people with disabilities essentially having quality of life assumed for them. But I guess there's also a real fear around aging and end of life that folks who are quite a bit older may not have their lives valued in the same way and may in fact be pressured to accept an end-of-life decision. Are those tensions at all in play when you're having those conversations, or is that not really on people's radar yet? Certainly from my experience, I don't think it's quite there yet. Mm -hmm. They're just thinking, you know what, we want to make the decision-making put into place. Right. We want to make our decisions now, because all we know is that if we don't make it, someone's going to make it for us right. later. And so I'm finding that the focus is right there. But I do think that those policy considerations you just mentioned are things that are going to be at that next conversation. In a couple of years, I think that's going to be really front and center. And then how do we deal with that? Ian, do you think that people want government making these decisions? Well, I, I mean, I think in, in large part, no, uh, but it, it's the only answer. Uh, but I mean, I do think, uh, you know, in touching on what who is going to be involved with some of the, the change and the movement of change is that, you know, as, as lawyers, we have to manage vulnerable people as well. And you're talking about people that can be exposed to vulnerable decision making and, uh, and who are vulnerable. Uh, and so, I mean, I think government has to play a role, and I think they're going to always, I mean, I, I, I sort of, in my view, I think it's one of the last areas of estate planning where government will always have to tell us what to do, 
because it, it ties into the whole question of making the decision of suicide and assisted suicide and so on. But I really don't, I mean, I think ultimately uh, we may get to be able to plan around it as well. And those are the sorts of engaging and interesting things that as we as lawyers get to start to roll our sleeves up and think about how we're going to service our clients with this issue. And this really is, a, in a sense, a new issue for many of us who are practicing. So as lawyers, as family members, ourselves, something we need to start thinking about. What would we want and what would we want in terms of our culture and our norms as well? Well, we're standing on tender hooks waiting to see what's going to happen with this new Supreme Court of Canada decision. And I want to just thank Ian and Susanna for talking about physician-assisted suicide and all forms of assisted suicide here with us today at Hell and Hell. Thank you. Thank you.